So in most of our calculations of safety, we're going to be interested in the steady state average transmission rate uh, between individuals in a room after the aerosol particles have built up to a steady state. But let's briefly talk about uh, the transient buildup and how to take that into account uh, just as an aside uh, in this board here. So here is the uh, general expression for the transmission rate that we described, uh, which depends on the breathing rate squared, uh, the, the, the volume of the room. It's an integral over all the different drop sizes, where NQ is a lumped uh, uh, distribution of the number of infection quanta per volume per, uh, per radius. Uh, and then P PM is the mass transmission factor, which depends on radius. And lambda C is the total relaxation rate involving sedimentation and or settling and uh, viral deactivation and filtration. Uh, and that also depends, of course, on R. And that lambda C of R also ends up in the exponent here. So that actually, that, that rate of relaxation of the concentration in the air is also setting the time scale, lambda C inverse, for the buildup of those aerosol droplets in the air. And so that's this, this factor here. This is basically the, uh, the transient term, is this term. And then this term, the one, is the steady term. Okay. So we're interested now, what's the effect of the transient? Now, before we get to that, if we forget about the transient now, and we just have the steady state, then we have introduced beta bar as the sort of constant uh, steady state value transmission. And through this uh, definition here, by doing these integrals, we have defined an effective radius R bar, which is sort of uh, where you evaluate the mask transmission factor and also the uh, filtration or the, uh, the relaxation rate in order to make these two uh, values equal. So that's actually our definition of effective radius. And so now looking at the, uh, at the transient term, uh, let's ask ourselves what is the uh, average transmission rate up to a certain time tau. So that would be we divide by a time tau and we ask ourselves up to that time, you know, what is the average transmission rate? So we integrate beta dt from zero to tau and then divide by, divide by tau. So what would that be? Well, we can take this time integral and bring it inside the radius integral and write this as qb squared over v integral zero to infinity of pm squared nq of lambda c, keeping in mind all those uh, factors depend on r, um, times now an integral from zero to tau, and I'll put this in brackets, of one minus e to the minus lambda c, which depends on r, uh, times t, uh, divided by uh, divided by tau um, dt, um, and then the r. So I'm switching the order of integration where we're going to do the time integral uh, first. Okay, and so what we have here, if we just look only at this expression right here. We can write this as a sum of a steady state term. So when it's just one, this is the integral of one over tau, you know, from zero to tau. So that's just one. So that's the steady state contribution. One plus, and there's a transient contribution where I have to do this integral here. So that's e to the minus lambda c of t over lambda c tau uh, evaluated from zero uh, to tau, and so uh, we'll come back to this in just a moment and evaluate that. <clears throat> but just to draw a picture maybe first of what we're looking at here, the average transmission rate um, as a function of this averaging time tau, well, eventually, of course, it tends to the steady state value, but it does so in a certain way we're going to calculate like that where the time for that transmission or for that transition is, is the inverse of the relaxation time. Um, although there's not a precise value of that, but if we want to keep actually a, um, a scale for it, it's going to be evaluated at that value R bar that I mentioned. That gives you a rough sense of the overall relaxation. So this is this buildup of the aerosol concentration in the room once the infected person is entered, and eventually there's sort of a steady transmission rate to everyone else in the room. 
So let's, uh, let's continue uh, calculating this right here now. So this is the transient. And I can write this as 1. Um, and if I evaluate here, um, I can put it this way as minus. And then I evaluate first at the lower limit, which gives me another 1, minus and then evaluating the upper limit, which is tau, e to the minus lambda c tau over lambda c tau, OK? And now I'll use an, an approximation that helps me get an, a simple analytical result. So I should mention, as soon as we have exponentials and polynomial factors, it can be difficult to solve equations for, for example, what is the bound on the occupancy or the time in the room you know, or the ventilation. We'd like to get a simple formula. And so uh, it, it, there's a, a nice approximation I can make, which is that 1 minus e uh, to the minus x uh, over x is not too far off from 1 over 1 plus x, it turns out. So it's not a perfect match. You can try plotting these two functions. But it's a, it's, it's a reasonable approximation, given that everything we're doing in this calculation, when applied to a real situation, is going to be off you know, by some uh, uncertainty, which could be you know, a factor of two or three, uh, this is actually going to be uh, more than good enough of an approximation for us. So if I make that approximation, then what I have here is that this thing is one over uh, one plus uh, one plus uh, uh, x here, and so we end up with uh, one minus uh, one over one plus lambda c tau. And when I combine those two terms, I end up with lambda c uh, tau over 1 plus lambda c tau. OK? So that's, uh, th this is my approximation. In fact, I can further then uh, write that as 1 over 1 plus lambda c tau inverse, dividing the numerator and denominator by lambda c tau. OK? So I'm just making some approximations here that allow me to get a very simple expression in the end uh, for my, my uh, safety guideline, taking into account this transient uh, buildup here. So remember that the bound we have is on the indoor reproductive number, which is n minus 1 uh, times the integral uh, to tau of beta uh, dt. So what is that? That's just the sort of time average beta times tau. Okay, so this bound is actually n minus 1 time average beta times tau. And then our, our guideline, of course, is to make this less than our tolerance uh, epsilon. Okay, and so what that means then is using uh, this result, you can see that I just get the rest. Of, so if I look at the expression for beta bracket, is just the steady state expression times this factor. So basically, this is kind of the, the, the factor that corrects for transient effects, again, with just a simple approximation. Uh, so I can then write that my guideline now has a modified form, which is that n minus 1 times tau is less than epsilon over the time average beta up to time tau. And this is approximately equal to epsilon over beta steady state times uh, this factor here. If I multiply that to the other side, um, I just get 1 plus 1 over is lambda c of r bar tau. Uh, so, so basically, this right here is the transient correction or modification, and uh, this is the steady state formula, which we will more typically be using. Now, why do we care about the transient? Um, well, first of all, you can see that the tr by using the transient, we are being uh, less conservative. So if we want to be very conservative, we can say, you know what? Let's just assume the second that the affected person enters the room, boom, the transition rate goes right to the maximum value. That's the most conservative. So generally, using the steady state is more conservative. So that's one reason we like to use it. 
Um, also, it gives you a simpler formula. Why add a bunch of factors uh, to a formula that only make it less conservative? And, you know, we've made a lot of assumptions in this model, so it makes sense maybe let's not worry about it. However, I do actually like to include it for certain examples because it allows you to capture the intuition we all have that when the time goes to zero, the risk also has to go to zero, which you don't get from steady state, right? If this bumps up right away, then you could be spending like two seconds in a room and you have a a chance, of in fact, a chance of getting infected right away, which is actually not right. There has to be some time physically for transmission to happen through these droplets from one person to another. So the effect of the transient correction, as you can see here, is when, when lambda c tau is larger than one, so that's times that are kind of out here, that term is gone. But when you get to these earlier times or very short times where there hasn't been time yet for the buildup of the uh, airborne uh, uh, concentration, then as you see as tau goes to zero, actually this term diverges. So what actually happens is that if I calculate sort of, you know, um, for example, what they can get from this guideline is what is the uh, sort, of, sort of maximum occupancy or versus time, or it's sort of the maximum time in the room for a given occupancy. We're going to be looking at lots of plots like this. Um, I would have something that might look like this for steady transmission, okay? And when this time gets larger than lambda C of R bar inverse, okay, there's some critical time scale there, which is this one right here, then when you're past that time scale, you've got the steady state. But if you go to a smaller times, then what happens is that this thing can sort of blow up a lot faster. So. Uh, so what it kind of helps to capture is, again, this intuition that if I put in like tau is, you know, extremely small, then of course the risk goes away and I can have larger numbers of people in the room or I can tolerate smaller times and actually be safe. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's one reason uh, we do that. On the other hand, for a conservative guideline and the most important message of this course really is to think about that steady state transmission rate, which we will mainly be focusing on in all of our examples.